When we first defined the electric field, we said that it exerts force on other electrically charged objects. And that force is the electric force. So if we suppose that we have a simple example where we have an electric field that looks like this, not sure what created the electric field, I'm just told that's what it is. Well, if now we put charged objects or charged particles in this electric field, they will experience an electric force. And because we know the electric field goes from regions of higher potential or from plus to regions of lower potential or simply minus to make it easier, we suspect that if we put a positive charge here, let's say Q1 positive, well Q1 is going to be repelled by this positive area and attracted by this negative area. And in fact, it's going to experience an electric force that's going to pull it along the electric field like this. And this is going to be Fe1. And the expression for Fe1 is simply going to be Q1 times E. So the electric force is Q times the electric field. Now Q1 is a positive charge. Let's take a look at a negative charge. Say we put a negative charge right here. Well, it's going to be repelled by this negative region and attracted by this positive region. It's going to experience a force if this is Q2 presumably negative, it will experience a force, let's call it F of E2. And F of E2 is going to be Q2 times E. Now be careful, because Q2 is negative, in fact, these two vectors, F, E2, and E, point in opposite directions. All right? Whereas here, with Q1 positive, F, E1, and E point in the same direction. So you can argue it either with the equation, if you like that more, if you know the sign of Q1 or Q2, but you can also argue it with um, the fact that the electric field goes from high potential to low potential, so that this area will attract a negative charge and repel a positive one, and therefore you know the direction of the electric force. So keep in mind that the electric force in general is Q times the electric field E. In other words, if you can find the electric field, then you're in good shape to find what the electric force is. And we've gone over a few examples, the wire, the sheet, the sphere, where we've given you the electric field so that you can then find the electric force quite easily.